So it is that time of year again. For normal people, it is the you know, it's the time of pumpkin spice, turkey slaughter, and all other manner of things. But for anime fans, this is the last season of anime for the year. This will finish off 2017, which has been not a bad year for anime. It's been pretty good this year. I mean, we've had our share of bullcrap and our share of really good shows. This year has not been too bad. At least, at least not to me anyway. I mean, some people might say have different opinions. But I'd say it wasn't too bad a year. So this is the fall 2017 anime preview. Let's do this. So one of the biggest ones being Black Clover. So Black Clover is an anime... It's an anime based off of a manga. It's 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 a pretty big manga. I heard about it a couple years ago, like when it first started, and everybody was saying that, oh man, this is not when it first started, but after it started, people were saying this was going to be the next one of the big three. You know how the big three like were like uh, Naruto, One Piece, and Bleach. Now Naruto ended, Bleach died, One Piece is still trucking on, uh, and a couple of the other big shonen shows like um, you know like Fairy Tail is ending soon. You know, my hero, hero Aka is, is going on. That's continuing on. So this one is supposed to be the next one of the big three. And it, it has all the ingredients to kind of do that. I mean, it, it's, it has it starts off two protagonists, uh, Yuna and, a you know, <laughs> you know, and Asta. I think it's Astra. Asta. A-S-T-A. Asta. Okay. And they're, um, they're basically the two kind of protagonists. Of course, we know our main character is really going to be Asta because he's born to a, in a world of magical people with no powers. So, took that from Hero Aka. He's going to end up getting some kind of special MacGuffin uh, that's going to make him uber powerful, like Naruto and every other shonen ever. I mean, it's a shonen. I like shonen. I grew up on shonen. I'm going to give it a shot. So, the next one is Inuyashiki. So, Inuyashiki is... A story, it, it's it's interesting, it's kind of like Old Man Cyborg, I guess if you could say it. Because uh, basically this old man, on the end of his rope, you know, his his family doesn't respect him, people doesn't res don't respect him, and he just finds out that he has cancer and he has a couple of months to live. And basically he's at the end of his rope. Like, his, his life can get no lower than this. He gets hit by this light, and he, you know, he's just there. And he finds out that he has cybernetic parts inside of him he's like cyborg from from justice league now and so of course he's going to go on and do heroic things but it turns out that there could possibly be somebody else that has this very same thing that happened to them and they might be thinking something different thinking being evil now this show is made by the same people who made the same guy who made gantz so i've expected it to be gory the only downside is it's going to be on Anime Strike, and I'm not going to pay Amazon $107 freaking dollars, $106, dollars to, to watch a show. I mean, and it sucks, because Anime Strike is killing shows, like, seriously, like, Princess Principal, uh, uh, Ina, Ina Yushiki, uh, Oni He, um, uh, um, um, Tales of the Abyss, or Made in the Abyss. All of these shows could have been show of the season. For their season, if it was on a, a platform that was accessible to most people, but it's not. But uh, I'll still watch it somehow. <laughs> the Frankenstein family. Um, but yeah, so basically, this one kind of follows the premise like this. So there is a lady. Um, well, these four, I think it's four or five kids. They were experimented on by their mother, who was a scientist. And she did some kind of DNA splicing with them and spliced them with different things. There's a chick who has spider legs that come on her back. There's a chick who has plants on her head. And there is a dog child. So just please, for, for the love of everything good, don't kill the dog child. So Die Horizon on paper looks like Square Enix's attempt to replicate what Namco did with Grand Blue. Uh, at least that's what I've been hearing from a lot of people. Um, to me, it looks kind of like that, but it might not be the same. Because this is about a particular chick who has, like... It's this chick, and she has... How can I explain it? She has a secret. She has a secret to the end of the world. And, of course, she doesn't have any freedom. They're keeping her under lock and key. 
keeping her watch because whatever her secret is is important to the end of the world. And she wants to be free. And of course, our main, our other main protagonist, the guy, is going to try to free her from this. Uh, so maybe she can be free and possibly die. At least that's what... The, the, the freaking description is so convoluted, it's kind of annoying. But that's what I got from it, the gist of it. Um, but it does look a lot like Grand Blue, fan, uh, Grand Blue though. So take that as it may. Now, this one, I don't have to read. I, I couldn't really summarize this one. So, this one is Dice ID or Dice Ide, uh, on May 1st, 1945, in Berlin. As the Red Army rises, the Soviet, raises the Soviet flag over Reichensk, blah, German place, uh, a group of Nazi soldiers conduct a ritual. For them, the slaughter in the city is nothing more than a perfect then perfect for their ritual sacrifice in order to bring back the Order of 13 Lances, a group of supermen whose coming would bring the world's destruction. A lot of people want to destroy the world this season. Um, years later, no one knows if the group of officers succeeded or not or whether they are alive. And the few people who knew of their existence died in the passing decades. Now, on, now, in December, in present-day Japan, in Suwahara City, uh, Ren Fuji spends his days at the hospital. It has been two months since the incident that brought him to the hospital, a fight with his friend Shiro Yusei, or Shiro, yeah, Shiro Yusei, where they almost killed each other. He values, he tries to value what he has left of him. So that means he fucked him up. He messed him up. <laughs> His best friend messed him up. Um, what he has left of him. But every night he sees the same dream. A guillotine. Murderers who hunt people. The black clove knights who pursue the murderers. He is desperate to return to his normal everyday life. But even now he hears Cheryl's words. Everyone who remains in this city eventually loses their mind. This is weird because this that, that was two paragraphs. Each one of those paragraphs sounds like a completely different show. Like, I'm interested to see how this goes. This could be lame, but it, it sounds like it's going to be interesting. So next one is Kino's Journey, The Beautiful World. Now this one, I don't know about. Because um, I've never watched the original Kino's Journey. And I'm not sure if this is a sequel to Kino's Journey. Or if this is like a remake or a retelling of the story or an update or something. I'm thinking this is a remake of the story because I haven't really seen anything new from it. But if you don't know about Kino's journey, Kino is a, uh, is a young person and they're traveling around this land basically going from place to place. And each one of the places is like a different country. And they, they do various things. They're like a, it's like a, think like Mushishi, just a little different. And that's essentially Kino's journey. It's not all the same as Mushishi because she settles more like socio-political issues. Whereas the guy from Mushishi was really, you know, fixing people's issues with supernatural monsters and stuff. But yeah, she travels from place to place dealing with various issues. She only stays for about three days so that she can continue being a wanderer. And she has a talking motorcycle. <laughs> So, I, I missed out on the first Kino's Journey. I'll definitely check out the remake. I might even compare the two. I might watch the original afterwards to see which one is better. So, this is a big one for me, alright? The Ancient Mage's Bride. So, I watched the OVA that came out with the manga. And I was like, okay. I was kind of a taste of it. Basically, what it is, is it's, a, uh, it's about this young girl named Chise. And she is, um, she's a slave. And she is purchased by this tall dude with, like, a goat skull face. And he basically buys her not to be his slave, but to be his apprentice and to be his bride. Because he is a powerful magus. Or basically a mage. You know, just want to be fancy with it. But he's a powerful mage. Uh, now the, the, um, the OVA, which is only like three episodes long, really doesn't go too far into the story, 
But the anime seems to go deep. I see, I've seen more characters in just the trailer from the anime than I saw in the entire OVA. So I'm like, okay, I'm ready for this. And it's on Funimation. So that means it's going to get dubbed. Hopefully simul dubbed. Because uh, it is a slice of life show. So um, it's going to be uh, kind of dialogue heavy. And I like to watch those type of shows in dub. But if not, I'm still going to watch it anyway. So... This should be interesting. So the next one I'm going to have to read too. This one is Shoujo Shumatsu Ry Ryoku. Uh, this is an adventure slice of life. A lot of slice of life this season. Uh, so this one is different though. This one feels like a post-apocalyptic slice of life. Like civilization is dead. But uh, Chito and Yuri are still alive. So they hop aboard their beloved kitten clad motorcycle. Um... And aimlessly wander the ruins of the world they once knew. Day after day, hopelessly, they look after, look out for their next meal and fuel for their ride. But as long as the two are together, even existence in, uh, as bleak as theirs has a ray or two of sunshine. Now, the thing with this show is it feels like this, this, this show, they just there's going to be some Yuri here. I don't mind Yuri, you know, romance or whatever between two chicks. But I'm like, kind of make it po post-apocalyptic. Like, about, like there's got to be something else than just slice of life stuff here. Even though I think they're not really going to go that far with anything else. And it's going to be about their day-to-day -day trial surviving in a post-apocalyptic world. Which could get boring if there's nothing trying to kill them or something like that. But it, it could be interesting, you know. So next one is Osama Game. Yeah, I, I don't know why I said Osama like that, but yeah, and of course they've already changed the name of this one. It's called the King's Game in in the states because I don't think you. I mean, even though it's Osama, it's not spelled like Osama, but still, people are gonna make that connection, okay? But um, but yeah, definitely Osama. Um, the King's Game is about a another high school student transfers to a new high school. And, you know, he's trying to fit in, and then this cell phone game pops up. And everyone gets all these emails, and he knows what's happening. This is going to turn into a Battle Royale game. So there are two Battle Royale anime this season. I don't think I have the other one on the list. Um, but there are two Battle Royale anime this season. This is one of them, and it looks pretty interesting. So the next one is Haosinki no Kuni. So this one is it's interesting, but it's also kind of dumb at the same time. So basically, it's about this race of people called gems. And I know what you're thinking, because I was thinking the same thing. Steven Universe. Uh, but yeah, they're, they're literal gems, though. They're not like the gems on Steven Universe. These, these people are literally made of crystal. Um, and they have different roles, like fighter, medic, you know, stuff like, like you know, video game roles. And they fight against these other people that want to take them and turn them into decorations. That's the gist of the show. Now, the thing I will want to look for is it looks visually interesting. You know, it could be crap, but it looks visually interesting though. So I'm definitely going to check it out. Garo, uh, Garo Vanishing Line. In a prosperous city named Russell City. Russell City? Really though, bruh? Uh, an omen that threatens to shake the shake its world begins to move within it. A man named Sword. Really? His name is Sword? What is his brother named Shield? And his cousin named Gun? You know, his son's name is going to be Knife. <laughs> um, as um, is, is the first to hear... Wait a minute. Sword is the first to hear the first stirrings of the plot. And throws himself into a shadow war in order to expose it. His only clue is the is the keyword El Dorado. He meets Sophie, uh, a woman searching for her missing older brother, who has only left her the same words El Dorado. So I, I, don't, I could I can tell you what's going on with that. Uh, with Sword having also lost his younger sister in the past. Okay. 
both are drawn together by the words, and together uh, they will work to figure out, find out what's missing. So, this sounds like Dimension W. If you remember, this sounds like a, a more dark, gritty version. If you remember Dimension W, it was the same way. Except for a dude in Dimension W didn't give a crap. They figured out that there was a big thing going on. And he finds the robot chick. And they have to figure out what this shadowy organization that controls all the electricity in the world. This sounds like that. I'm getting the same vibes. And I like that show. Nobody really talked about that show that much. Um... And the, and, uh, the last two we have here is Inf Infinity Force. Infinity Force is stupid. Like, this show... So, in this show, basically, it's a, it's a Tetsunoko show. And they do like, they like to do a lot of team-up shows. Because they have their own kind of universe. With Gotcha Man and, 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 and all these other type of shows. They like to do team-ups a lot. And this is a kind of a team-up show for their universe. Um... And there's, a, there's literally a chick with the magic pencil from Spongebob, and she can draw whatever she wants, and it'll come to life. So she ends up drawing three of the heroes from past Tetsunoko shows. They come together to fight some evil thing, possibly something that someone else drew. I, I just want to see this one for the lulls, honestly, because how are we going to sell this? Really, the, the, the Spongebob pencil, though? Really, Tetsunoko? Of all the things you could think of to make another team-up show, this is what you come up with. I want to watch this one for the lulls. And the last one is Robo, Robot Ma Robo Masters, the animated series. So this one is basically a college club show about a team of uh, robot engineers who build robots and they fight each other. Think like if you've ever seen Robot Wars. I watched Robot Wars as a kid, and I was like, that's freaking sick. I literally wanted to go to college for robotics to do that. That didn't pan out. But <laughs> I've always been interested in Robot Wars and robots and stuff like that. And to have an anime about it, I'm definitely going to check it out. So that's about it. Uh, I'm probably going to do another list of shows you probably should avoid this season. Um, even though I'm not really that good of a judge of stuff like that, because shows in past seasons that I avoided turned to be really good. But you can check that out anyway. Like, comment, subscribe, and as always, people, keep it real.